Lesson six for foundations and pre-calculus involves multiplying polynomials. And if you're following along in your textbook, this is section 3.7. Or if you want to watch another set of videos, Math Johnson's videos on YouTube, he titles his by sections of textbook. So Math Johnson, section 3.7, if you want to see it uh, a second way. The learning intentions for today, first is to understand how the distributive, distributive property can multiply different size polynomials. So before with um, FOIL, it was a binomial times a binomial. Now we might be multiplying different size polynomials. So a binomial by a trinomial, etc. And the second thing we'll be working with is to use the order of operations, which you know as bed mass, to expand and simplify polynomial expressions. So sometimes instead of just multiplying, there'll be a plus sign and some things in between these polynomials that we need to work with as well. I'm going to try and relate this to something you already know. So something you already know is multiplying two binomials. And to do this, we did the box method of box diagram, and we also used FOIL. And FOIL is just a fancy way to make sure we do all parts of distributive property. In FOIL, we do the first times the first, and then the outsides, so the outside part times the outside part, and then the inside times the inside, and the last times the last. And so the distributive property, all it says is you distribute one part of the bracket into all parts of the other. So x multiplies the first, x multiplies the second. And then the 7 also has to distribute by all parts of the second one. So 7 times x, 7 times 5. And with this, we'd have x times x is x squared, x times 5 is plus 5x, 7 times x is plus 7x, 7 times 5 is 35. Collect anything we have the same. x's are the same, so we end up with x squared plus 35x, sorry, 5 and 7 is 12x plus 35. Uh, good example there, what happens when you start to rush, you make mistakes. So, now let's look at it when it's not a binomial, because we can't do FOIL. FOIL has a first times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, well what's the inside now? Last times last. There's going to be parts missing. The distributive property makes sure that we get the first one times each piece. So 4r needs to multiply r squared. 4r needs to multiply negative 2r. 4r needs to multiply negative 3. So dealing with those parts first, 4r times r squared. So 4 times 1 is 4. When we multiply letters, we add the exponents. So r times r squared, that's an r1 and an r2, is r cubed. Then 4r times negative 2r, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, r times r is r squared. Now the 4r must multiply the negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, r times nothing, or 1, is r. Now, Let's look at the second part. The second number must multiply each term. So 1 times r squared is r squared. 1 times negative 2r is negative 2r. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And now I need to collect my like terms. I only have this r cubed, and there's no other r cubes, so I have 4 r cubed. I have a minus 8r squared and a plus r squared. So minus 8 plus 1 is minus 7r squared. Now the r's. I have minus 12r's and minus 2r's. So I have minus 14r's and all I'm left with is this minus 3. So this is the expanded form of our binomial by our trinomial. Now we're going to look at uh, another example of expanding using distributive property. But first, what happens when you have more than uh, one variable or multiplying in two variables? So we're dealing with x's and y's mixed up. In that case, all you need to do is keep the numbers separate and each type of letter separate when multiplying. So in this example, I'm using this big dot as a multiply sign, and you'll see more of that. Um, it's just to save confusion. If you put an x there for multiply, sometimes it looks too much like these x's. So 
Numbers first. 2 times 3 is 6. Now the x's. x times x cubed. When we multiply letters or variables, we add the exponents. So there's a 1 there that's not shown. So x1 and x3 is x to the power of 4. And now the y's. y squared times y is y cubed. So just keep all your letters separate. Numbers, then letters, then any different letters. So now let's look at this one. Expand and simplify. So when there's brackets up against each other, it is multiply. When we're multiplying brackets, it's the distributive property. So this C must first multiply both pieces. C times 2C squared. Well, 1 times 2 is 2. C times C squared is C cubed. C times the second part. C times negative 3D is negative. 1 and 3 is 3. And always go alphabetical order. So C, there's not a C there, so we just have one C. We don't have a D, but we have a D, so we only have one D. Now, let's look at the second letter. D times 2C squared, and D times negative 3D. So D times 2C squared. We'll first start with numbers. 1 and 2 is 2. There is no C, but there's C squared, so we have C squared. We have a D, no Ds, so we have a D, just one. And now the last term, this one has to multiply both pieces. One times anything is whatever that thing is, so it's just all of this, because one times 2C squared is 2C squared. One times negative 3D is negative 3D. And now, do we have any like terms? Can we collect it all? Do we have any C cubes? No. Do we have any CDs? Well, here's a CD, but it's a C squared, so they're different. So CD, nope, nope, nope. Do we have any C squared Ds? Nope, nope. Do we have any C squareds? No. And that's our last one. So that is as simplified as it's going to get. Now we're going to look at expanding and simplifying a little further when there's not just uh, multiplying. We're throwing in some other operations in between the brackets. So bed mass or the order of operations always holds. So you need to make sure you do any brackets first. In this case, inside of the brackets though is already as simplified as it gets. Then exponents. There are no exponents up on these brackets. If one of these, say, had an exponent on there, you would first have to square this bracket or foil this bracket first. In this case, we don't. So brackets, exponents, then multiplication and division. So we have some multiplication here. Between these two brackets is a multiply, and between these two brackets is a multiply. So I'm going to, in this case, foil. And I'm going to rush through some of this because you've seen it a bunch. 4y times 3y is 12y squared. 4y times 2 is 8y. Minus 5 times 3 is minus 15y. Minus 5 times 2 is minus 10. And then we also have a multiply over here. So we have minus, and here's where you may make a mistake. We're going to minus all of this. So I'm going to keep a big bracket around it. Three, now let's foil this. 3y times 4y is 12y squared. 3y times minus 5 is minus 15y. 2 times 4y is 8y. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So now we've done the multiplying. Now what's left is the addition and subtraction. Now because there's a minus here, and we were minusing all of this. This is one term because it's multiplying. So we need to make sure this minus affects all pieces in here. So I'm going to rewrite it. I'll have 12y squared. I'm going to clean this up now. So I have minus 7y, minus 10. Now this minus needs to affect each piece. And when you times by negative, it changes the sign. So this was a plus 12y squared. Now it's a minus 12y squared. Minus minus is plus, so plus 15y. Minus a plus is minus 8y. Minus a minus is plus 10. And so, again, I rushed through some of those foils. 
um, and some of the expanding, but you've seen it throughout the videos now. The important part is that you did the multiplying first, then this minus affects the rest, and now we can collect our like terms. So 12 y squareds minus 12 y squareds means we have no more y squareds. Minus 7y plus 15y minus 8y is actually no more y's. Minus 10 plus 10, they cancel out too. So we're actually left with nothing at all. So one final example before I give you the assignment is another expanding and simplifying. In this case, we have three things to multiply. This could also, I guess, look like if we had, um, just making it up here, three brackets times each other. In this case, bed mass still occurs, so we need to make sure we do all our multiplying here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to multiply this bracket times this bracket, foil it out, and I will have 2x squared um, plus 9x plus 10. So I did that quickly in my head. And then I would have 4x minus 5 still. So if there's three brackets, multiply two of them, and then now we'll have to do distributive property like we did in our first or second example, and each of these pieces needs to multiply each of the last one. Okay, so what I originally had started with this though was I had a negative xy up here. And in this case, it's the same. This negative xy needs to multiply this part, and then all of that needs to multiply the remaining part. So negative xy times 2x. Well, remember from earlier, numbers, then the similar letters. So negative times 2 is negative 2. x times x is x squared. y times there's no y means we just still have the 1. Negative xy times 5. Well, negative times plus 5 is minus 5 x and y, there's no x's and y's, so we just still have the same x, y. And it's in brackets because I've multiplied this part in to each of those. And now we can multiply it by the second part. So this one needs to multiply both, and then this one needs to multiply both. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 x squared times x is x cubed. y times no y means we just have one y. Now this all needs to multiply negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 5 is plus 10. x squared y just stays the same. And now the second part needs to multiply both. So I get negative 5 times 4 is minus 20. x and an x is x squared. y and nothing is y. And now this one needs to multiply the last one. Negative 5 times negative 5 is plus 25 xy. There's nothing left here, so the xy stays. And now are there any like terms? Well, we have an x cubed y. No. x squared y. Well, here's an x squared y. So we can collect. Those are the same. We have 10 of them minus 20 of them. So we have minus 10 x squared y's. And the parts that did not have anything in common come along for the ride and there is our answer. So now what I'm going to do is I will give you the assignment. It, again, if you struggled with some of these ideas, you can look through the textbook um, starting, I guess the assignment starts on 186, so go back to part 3.7. The start of 3.7 you can see some book examples and also Math Johnson on YouTube his videos, section 3.7, will show you similar to what I did today. So the assignment is page 186, questions 4 and 5, 8 up to 11, 13 up to 15, 19 and 21. Do A, C, and E for each. Um, some of them don't go up to E, so then you don't have to do E. Uh, some just have A, B, C, D, so you'll only do A and C. Okay, good luck.